In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to write a Flash application that connects to a lecture server and logs in. We're going to use Flash Develop as the code IDE, and we're going to write it using ActionScript 3. So first, you're going to want to make sure that you have a lecture server installed and it's running. Right here, you can see the console window for a lecture server. I have it installed locally, and it's running. Uh, it's running on IP 127.0.0.1 and port 9899. Okay, so let's get started here. First, I'm going to create a new project using Flash Develop. I have Flash Develop open here. I'm going to create a new project. Project, new project. And I'm going to select AS3 project. Let me just stop for a moment and uh, mention that th this example is going to be code only. I'm not creating any UI or assets or anything like that. So um, an AS3 project by itself is going to be just fine. Um, we'll we'll connect to Electro server and log in, and we'll know that it's worked because we're going to log things to the to the output window. Um, so anyway, I can just select AS3 project here. Uh, give it a, a project name. I'll call it connect and log in. And then I'm going to browse for a location for this project. I created a directory on my desktop called ES5 AS3 examples. Select that. Okay, and I'm just going to click OK. So now we have a basic, uh, completely empty Flash application here. Um, a main.as file was created. I'm going to just remove some stuff that Flash develop automatically puts in there. Okay. So, before we move on, um, I need to add the SWIC file to the lib directory here uh, that will give us access to the Electro Server API. The way the Flash application is able to connect to Electro Server and communicate with it is by using an API that uh, was created for this purpose. So, uh, let's find that SWIC file and put it in the lib directory. So if I go to uh, the installation directory of Electro Server, you can see I have Electro Server 5.0.1 installed. Uh, if I go to this this directory and double click on APIs, client, AS3, and then dist, I'll find Electro Server 5.swic. This is the SWIC file needed for this application. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to <clears throat> go to the uh, new project that we just created. Uh, this is the new project we just created, and here's the lib directory. Going in there, pasting the SWIC file. Now, if I go back to Flash Develop and look in under the lib directory here, uh, Electro Server 5.swic shows up. So I just right click on that and select Add to Library. So now uh, that I've selected Add to Library, uh, as I type uh, code over here, um, we, we get the benefit of, of code hinting and auto-completion and things like that. Also, when we compile the application, um, it uses this as a library. All right, so there's one more thing I want to do before we, uh, before we start writing code, um, and that when the application is compiled, it shows up in this bin directory here. So, uh, and and uh, I want to be able to uh, externalize the IP and port, or the host name and port that the application will try to connect to. So I do that by creating an XML file that I put in the bin directory. When the application launches, we, we want it to load that XML file and dynamically pull from it the host and port to connect to. So I'm just going to right click on bin and choose add new XML file. I'm going to type in settings as the name, so settings.xml. And in here, I'm just going to add some XML, which I'll explain, settings, and connection, add another connection. 
All right, so what we're doing here is defining two potential connections that uh, the application could make. The first one, host 127.0.0.1 and port 9899. Uh, and the transport, which I'll explain what this is in a moment, is binary TCP. And we'll give it a server name of just server one. So let me fill out this next one and then I'll explain again what, what, what all this is. <clears throat> Transport HTTP and server equals server one. All right. Um, and by the way, this is uh, these are both server ID not server. <clears throat> so uh, what these two lines do is define what um, uh, p potential connections that the application, the client application could use. Uh, so by default it's going to try this first uh, connection and if it fails it's going to move on to the next one and you could provide as many of these down here as you want. So The first one is binary TCP. Uh, I'm not going to explain what uh, the details of what this is in this tutorial, but you could just um, it's you could just know right now that it's the most common one to use, and uh, in almost all cases we'll be using this. Uh, HTTP is is sort of a fallback, and it it can get through firewalls and things like that if the first one fails. The server ID is is just something. Um, the value of this can be anything you want, really. It just gives you a way to look up this information from the API later by name if you wanted to. All right, so let's just hit save and go back to the application. All right, so uh, let's just start typing. Um, and Flash develop it will auto automatically bring in some imports um, as we need them. So the first thing we need is to create a um, instance of the Electra server class. So underscore es, oops, private var underscore es Electra server equals new Electra server. So we jump down here into the main event handler. We could just say es dot load and connect um, and give it the XML file name settings dot XML. Okay, so if we were to compile the application just like this, there's almost no code in here. This would all already work. This would create a new connection to the locally running Electra server and connect. But we wouldn't know that it works because we're not listening for any events yet. So let's do that. Let's listen for the on connection response, the connection response event. So es dot engine dot add event listener. Um, We'll need to uh, import something here in just a moment. <clears throat> Let me do that right now. Message type. Okay. So we want to listen for message type dot connection response dot name, and we'll map that to the on connection response event handler. And let's uh, control shift one to generate an event handler. And we can change this event type from event to connection response. And we could just trace out in here connection succeeded plus e dot succeed successful dot two string. So this event, uh, this connection response. Um, event object contains a successful property. If true, that means the connection succeeded. If false, that means the connection failed. So let's compile this and test to see if it worked. It's compiling. Cool. You can see down here, connection succeeded, true. So we were able to successfully add, um, establish a connection. 
So now that the connection has been established, let's log in. So if e dot successful, let's create a new login request var lr login request equals new login request, and we'll add a username to this login request. Let's just type job, and then we'll send this login request to the server es dot engine dot send lr. So now if we were to run this uh, code, as soon as a successful connection is established, a login request is created and then sent to the server. We don't know though if we're logged in until we receive the, connect, uh, the login response. So let's listen for the login response up here. es.engine.addEventListener message type login response dot name on login response and then control shift one generate event handler I'll type in login response here and just like the connection response um, event object the login response event object contains a successful property as well so we'll trace logged in colon, um, and then add e dot successful to string. Now let's compile this and see if it worked. It worked. Connection succeeded true, logged in true. Okay, so we've now successfully logged in, uh, connected to Electro server, and logged so we're actually done with this tutorial, but I'm going to throw one last thing here on the end, um, just uh, since we have a, a little bit more time left. Um, let's let's enable uh, logging so that uh, we can see in the console window everything that Electro Server is doing. Uh, so we do that by uh, uh, we have to add a couple of imports here. So I'll scroll up here and add import com dot Electro Tank dot logging dot adapter dot log and then import com dot electrotank dot logging dot adapter dot i logger so we add those two imports and then right here I'm sorry right here we'll add uh, log dot set log adapter and then new es5 trace log um, ES5 trace adapter. So now that the, that line has been added, uh, if we were to compile the application, we'll see down here in the console window pretty much everything that can happen. So let me compile. And just inspecting this really quickly. Um, the application is running and you could see uh, what's been logged out. It says loading settings file. Um, settings file was loaded, attempting this connection and it tells you the host and port. Connection's been established. It says that a connection response was received, a login request was sent, and a login resp response was received. So it's up to you if you want to enable logging uh, in your application. Uh, but if you do, uh, you are able to see uh, what's going on, even if you're not listening for the specific events. You can at least see that it's going on.